Live from beautiful Ohio, it's the OK Boomer podcast featuring siblings, the real Jean and Laura. Hello, hello, I'm Jean. And I'm Laura. And we are here to encourage all you boomers, millennials, and everyone in between to be happily okay together. That's us. And we are also here with very detailed program notes this time. We do. I've got stars and circles and arrows and remind Laura to say this and don't forget to do this and then go to the top and then skip the middle. So... We we have no idea, but let's give it a whirl. Let's. And how was your week? Oh, my week. Let me. But right before you do tell us, oh. special announcement time. Dee, 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 we dee. have a great story from a listener yes. named Deborah Ayers Brown, and I'm saying her whole name as it's on Facebook because she has a very good um, Facebook called Authors Ignite for writers yes she does right it's very good and she's a she's very talented she's had a long career of writing not that she's old she just is not right she started very young (laughs) sorry eddie sorry deborah so this is what happened to deborah this past week yes i love this story we could all relate all right i found this on her facebook so i'm sharing it I've decided Alan, that's, this is Deborah speaking, and she says, I've decided Alan, who is her husband. Her age. Yeah, her age. And I aren't smart enough to own a smart TV. So should boomers be allowed? No. To have a smart <laughs> I'll tell TV? You right now, no. No. You know, and I was wondering too, and I, when, when you think about like moving into like some kind of assisted living, or senior place, do they have technicians standing by? I'm sure in every room. <laughs> they, right, so if your internet goes out, they'll come and fix it? Oh, this could be a career for good high-tech guys, just right. start Keeping living in nursing homes. For people who can never remember what the router is. Yeah. They always say, press the green light on the router, and I'm like, oh. where is my router? <laughs> First and of how, all. And how does that compare to a modem? Right. So I appreciate questions. Deborah's story. Yes. Back to her story. Yes. So her smart TV, the cable box gets knocked out every time they have a storm, even though she has several surge protectors, like a surge protector for her surge protector. Yeah, that happens. All right. So the last time there's a big storm, they finally got that all unraveled, plugged in. They're ready to watch TV. They had to do some final hookups. Not hiccups, hookups. I guess. Thanks for the clarification. Thanks, right. Um, so she was trying to get her fingers to screw something in, and she couldn't quite reach it. So Alan to the rescue. He lies flat on the floor to do it. But he gets a cramp. Oh, dear. While he's on his back. <clears throat> Lots of drama ensued because Deborah thought Alan was having a heart attack. Which it is sort of comical to think he's laying there, <laughs> right. seemingly in pain. She thinks he has a heart attack, all to hook up their and, smart TV. Yes, you just had to be where, there with us. We never could get the new remote to work, even after following the instructions to unpair the old YouTube directions. Still can't watch regular TV. Yes, we've been there, Deborah. It is hard. And I'm actually very impressed, Deborah, that you thought to look on YouTube to find the directions. YouTube does help. Have you done that? I, I have tried it for various things, but yeah, doesn't always spare So thanks, well. Deborah. I'm, that's yeah, how Deborah's yeah. week was. We can relate. Right, so how was your week? That was Deborah's week. Well, I, I will attempt this again, my dear, but that was a good little yeah. sharing of other... Yeah, I, thanks, Deborah. She may be too young to be a boomer, but <clears throat> we're, we're all we're all feeling you. Okay, my week. We drove, We had another road trip. Road yes. Road trip. We like to travel, the OH and I. So we drove to Illinois to visit our son, and his friend, and we just had a wonderful time, delightful time. Really, Illinois. If you haven't been to Illinois lately, more in the middle of Illinois, where they have like two hours south of Chicago, they have starved rock, which is just, you wouldn't think of it as Illinois flatlands. It's just fantastic. What is it? It's called starved rock. Like you're hungry, you're starving. I never heard of this. Yes, 
And apparently, it's just a gorgeous state park. Tons of hiking, steps everywhere. I mean, you want to get your steps in? They have the steps. Like the meat, they got the steps. So really cool. So we were driving out and I got all excited because we passed by a turnpike rest stop, which I desperately always need now that I'm drinking this great big gallon water bottle. Oh, you're on. onto that, right? So I excitedly say to my O out, O ow, my O H. <laughs> Sometimes an ow, no, he's wonderful. My O H, look, I can't believe they named the turnpike after Gomer Pyle. But it wasn't Gomer Pyle, it was Ernie Pyle. I kept shouting out Ernie Pyle. And I said, wow, I can't believe they would actually take a TV character, Ernie Pyle, for the rest stop. And my OH said, honey, it's Gomer Pyle. <laughs> It's not Ernie Pyle, so wah, wah. Oh, well, and you know who Ernie Pyle is. Yeah, no, I actually don't. <laughs> you would have thought after that I would have researched He's, he, it. He doesn't live in Mayberry, so you yeah. have you no use for him. He was a, um, a, a news person, a correspondent during World War II. Wow. Famous. You just learn something new all the time. No, yeah. Yeah, so... It's Ernie Pyle, apparently a news guy. It's not Gomer Pyle from the show, but all you sweet millennials don't know who Gomer Pyle is anyway. So, there we have it. All right. Moving on. What a week, Laura. Uh, <laughs> is there more? And yes, it's hard to top that. Just a couple of notes. These are just little notes. We had talked about Chugi last time. We had. Things that are not really trendy, but recently were pretty trendy apparently and, yeah if you're a boomer you still think this is trendy but now all the new millennial gen zers says no it's done word wall art oh yeah right that it's, is, it's that is gone. right now none of these painted painted words on your walls and believe and hope and all love, that live love <laughs> laugh it's all it's chuggy don't ask for a lighter load. Ask for a stronger back. I was going to share that with you. You were. I was going to even make a little wooden. Well, honey, don't write it on the wall. So Sorry. what are people doing with their Cricut? Because we had talked about Cricut a while back. Those Cricut machines. That oh, was a big yeah. thing. You could stencil and make your I, own. They'll have to come up with oh, something new. Chuggy, chuggy. Chuggy, chuggy. But we use the term chuggy properly. Yes. So oh, that God. that's pretty good. All right. A couple other notes. This, I don't think I mentioned before, but I saw some of this recently, and I saw it the last days of subbing at the high school. The latest fashion trend I've seen on young girls, like teens, black fishnets. Oh my gosh, that rings a bell. Yes, black fishnets. Now, huh. we used to wear like white it does. fishnets yes. maybe in the 70s. We're going back to the 70s. Well, why do they like black <laughs> fishnets? What did they wear them with? I don't know. They wear them with like cute little... Tennis shoes or little booties and shorts or skirts. Shorts or skirts, it works. Well, they're cute. They're 15. They look good in everything. I don't think I'm ready to pull out the black fishnets. Oh, my. I'll pass on this. Huh. But thank you for sharing I it. just, anytime Very I Very good fashion pickup here. Yes, yeah. give you the latest in fashion sense. Now, two words I've been having fun with. Oh. And, and they, for some reason, have shown up each of these words like in the last week, you know how words show up? Sometimes? I do. Or you haven't heard something in a long time yes. and then it's, yes. Somebody had there mentioned this and I've read it the first And they both start with the same caddy. Like cats. Like meow. Oh. Like C-A-T-T-Y caddy. Huh. The first one, and I've seen it, I think, two or three times lately, is cattywampus. But I, yes. Does anyone still say cattywampus? My older son does. I love it. <laughs> Good for him. him. Yes. I had not heard that in forever, so cattywampus to all of you. That's kind of how my show notes are for today. Cattywampus. cattywampus right, which I, I think means... It's a disarray. Things yeah, are kind right. of a mess, tumbled all over the place. And the other one is catty corner. Right, which why did we ever come up with that? I don't know. And that's like diagonal... Right. Across from you. And we used to use it in our neighborhood. She lives catty corner from Suki or somebody. Right. I don't know. So, so right. Catty Wampus and Catty Corner, but I've heard these two words in the last couple of days. That is interesting how those I pop into your I'd life. Share, Thanks. Share Thanks for sharing. Insight. A quick shout out 
Oh, yeah, we are we too. Went a, we've been on a craze to redo our cottage. Yeah. We're not going to rent it this year, and we decided we can go in and start to redo our cottage. We've done two days. We managed to put primer up. Excellent. And one coat of paint in one room. So this, this but good. But this looks could good, take huh? a while, yeah. but we're getting there. We had a little problem with our hot water tank. It was a silly problem of ours, realizing oh, it would have to be that they have to be turned on. They have but... to be actually turned on. Yes, yeah. with the breaker box. But we, you know, so we had to call out Randy from Randy's Plumbing up at Lakeside Marblehead, Ohio, and he, they are just so good. He is so good. A quick shout out to Randy and his wife. And they stopped in, and she is an avid listener. She listens. I think that's fabulous. So, so hi, Tina. You. Hi, Randy. Hi, Randy. Hi, Tina. See thanks you, for, see you at the lake. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Your what a week you home. had, my dear. Yeah, and that, whew, I'm kind of out of breath thinking about it. I know. Life. Little cattywampus. Little My cattywampus. brain is kind of cattywampus. You're, and you're right. The show notes are cattywampus. Another. Did you have anything else before I plunge into um, the... No, it's all hit and miss, so I'll just let you go for a while. Oh, all righty. All right. Um... Since we last chatted uh, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. we have a new ocean. Yes, we do. Crazy. How does that come about? It's called the Southern Ocean. I was a little disappointed with the name. I mean, a new yeah. ocean. Call it something more exciting. Yeah. Hyacinth. Oh, Hyacinth. That's our Thank favorite you, name. They should have called it Hyacinth. Well, so that's down in Antarctica, but closer to home. Yes. We have the Great Lakes Jumper. Bum, bum, bum. Which some of you may have heard of already on national news. But it's this really nice, creative, fun-loving guy who could be almost a boomer, I think, um, who spent the pandemic. Every morning he rode his bicycle to... Um, up here at Chicago. Yes. So this is Lake Michigan. Yes. Great I Lake say Michigan. Montreux something, but I could be all off. No, I Lake, think you're right. Or high point, I don't know. Doesn't matter. He yes. he rode and then he would um jump into Lake Michigan. Yes, which we're up north here, folks. It can get cold. Right. So in the summer I'm sure that was all right, but he carried on. Once he got going, he he liked it. It was just a I think it was a Something to do every day gave him a purpose. It was fun for him. Yes, and I believe then they do like concerts. He was hoping to support, raise money for local artists. He got into that. Yes, yeah, as a group because people started watching him and realizing he was doing this every week. So they come and watch him. So then he got into yeah supporting people who. Right, it was hard to be a band right. last year, so they came. And then in the winter time, it snows and freezes. He had to dig a hole for himself in the lake to jump into it. Which seems terrifying. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes he did black flips, front flips, but... Amazing. Yay, so I think he stopped, but it was a fun thing to do for him, and it cheered everybody up. Well, he did it for the full 365 days. Right. So. I mean, uh, Kudos. Would you do something like that? First off, I would never, I could barely jump in a lake, even just off a dock. Yeah, that's kind of scary. In the middle of the summer. Right. Wow. We should work on that, though. That would be. Maybe we should do that. So we can be great. In his we'll, honor, we'll, we'll be a great lake jumper, too. Well, what I do do every morning, I do not jump in the lake every morning. I have started doing yoga. Really? I've done it off and on, but I'm definitely back into it. Like the doggy stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever Downward it's dog. Yes. Right. Cow calf. Cow calf. All that. Cow cuddling. Yeah. Cow cat. I'm sorry. It's cow cat. Hmm. So, as everybody probably knows, good for strength, stretching, core, relaxing, loving your body. And it's, I like it too because it's really not. It's not competitive. So, because I know, that, I remember why I'm saying that is a couple of weeks ago, I think you said you went out and ran and you just ran so pathetically slow and it was just so slow. Instead of, you could have said, 
Oh, I just had a delightful movement of my body, of yeah, my limbs. Right, and even though I hadn't run in a while, it just felt good to get out there, and I'm thankful that my body could do it instead yeah. of hating your body. Cause no, it didn't. I was pathetically slow. But you, you're right. But so that's the good thing about yogurt. How slow were you, Laura? Uh, I guess I have to So say. slow that the other day the OH and I went for a walk. Like, we'll start at different places and then meet. I thought for sure I would just go whiz past him. He actually walked faster than I could run. Oh, that, that's yeah. That's how slow. But that's all right. But mm. say, your body, you did it. Yeah. You were okay. great. You so yoga, have... you like it. I do like it. I'll, yes, I do like it. Now let's move on to something else I like. New topic? Fun with food, yes. Oh, fun with food. Is that oh, good? I will go with food any day of the week. So yes. this is kind of weird. I was at a gas station filling my car. Yes. And it was one of those new pumps where they have the TV screen with the like a little show that yes. you watch while you're filling your gas. And this one apparently was on TikTok. They might have said that. So it was a new way to eat spaghetti. I had to finally turn my eyes away. It was so sickening. What it showed was a kitchen with a long, you know, island. So okay. long granite surface. Long island. Long island. Long, long island, island. But not the town. No. All right. Long Or island. the drink. And they had spread out yeah. all the layers of spaghetti you could eat. So they had three feet of pasta. Just then on top of it, they put all the sauce so there's three feet of sauce on this granite and then on top of that um like mushrooms and sausage and then cheese and then i turned away so somehow they i guess scooped it on the plate but you don't That's ever so weird. you've never made that so like you? you would take your spaghetti out and just lay it on your center island right and then all the layering and then you would people would just walk by and scoop what they want i think as opposed to just putting it in a bowl. Right, where was it put? Yes. So not for me. I mean, they do that at Cold Stone Creamery. I guess it putting was... it on a cold, so like Cold Stone Creamery, where there's a purpose to smash your toffee bits into it and butterscotch bars. Mm, yes. Oh, so good. Yeah. But you're doing this. Oh, yeah, no, no, not for me. Right. Now, maybe your little grandson would like it. Well, he sort of does that. Well, on his high chair. On his own. He has his own form of it going on in his So high. I just, I don't know. I would really be interested to hear if anybody has done this or seen it or thinks it's yeah, good. Yeah, I'm going to have to ask my kids. Mm. So mm. here's another food thing for you. How about this? Yes. Um, so these children of this woman who, who passed away, they put her fudge recipe, they had it engraved on her headstone. Oh, my goodness. Her fudge recipe. sort of sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Uh -huh. uh, it was sweet. How about you and your pretzel salad? Should we put that recipe on my head? So like, no. Oh. No. And then another one more pretzel salad question for you. When I was at the grocery, I saw in the deli they had made what looked like your pretzel salad. So I was all excited. Oh, yeah. it's Laura's pretzel salad. But it appeared to me that they had Oreo for the crust. Oh, it's so like a chocolatey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm, you no. got, have you ever tried any variations? No, I like my salty, salty pretzel salad with the sweet goodness of the innards. There you go. You can put that on my tombstone. <laughs> the sweet goodness she of the innards. Love this. All right. Well, I, that was my week, and I think you have a fun quiz for us. I do. Have I a love fun your quizzes. Quiz. Before I get to my quiz, oh, I will oh. say I want to give a big shout out to yeah. my friend Robin, who owns Heart of the Home there in Shalom. I never say that right. Springs, Arkansas. Shalom. It's not Shalom. I'm so sorry, Rob. But every time I do this, S I L O A M. Okay. It's near Bed. She also gave you the chicken. The chicken tongs. Chicken oh, big tongs. Of yep. The chicken tongs. She sent so to she me. came through with something she else. She came through again, and it's always so much fun because you get these packages. I'm in my office. I'm looking outside. I'm looking at the MLS and comps, and suddenly, the Amazon truck comes up. I have a package, and there it is. It's a puzzle. It's an Ohio puzzle. So we have a puzzle 
now working on of our oh it's state. like in the shape of ohio yeah santa's got like cities towns things it's just fantastic huh it's well a, I, I, the highlights of ohio yeah, yeah. all in a puzzle. so it's pretty blank or no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no we don't have the jumper but we'll have our own little well thing. we have the blimp we is do the, have the is blimp the, is the blimp on no, it no i need to double check that it all might right. be so, so now can we do the quiz? But thank you, Robin. Yes, thank you, Robin. And from somewhere, Hardball. right in Arkansas, somewhere. Arkansas. Yes. All right. Fun surprises. Okay, I have a little quiz for you, as I love to give you quizzes. You do. I love them too. Drink down your frothy coffee. So you're ready. I'm your ready. Go. I'm ready. In. Yep. The top ten, and I guess the question would be... And there's ten. Yeah, yeah well, we'll see how well your brain does. We have to jump a date. But well, have you ever bought something and then regretted your purchase? Thought you wanted something. Oh, I suppose. And I... then kind of regretted. It could be anything in life. could be anything. Furniture. It could be... Furniture, house. Fa foam bed. I didn't do that, but I, I wanted Water one of those. Bed, no right. Bed. Yeah. Okay. I well, suppose I have. I try to do that less at this point in my life. Yes. Okay. Yes. I try do. not to be regretful of your purchase. All right. So these are examples of um, items that are kitchen appliances that at one point people just thought they had to buy and later decided it's now sitting on the shelf and I used it two or three times. Right. Time for the garage sale, the yes. annual neighborhood garage yes. sale to roll around. Uh, may I hazard a guess? Well, yes. Number one, and this is Jean's guess. It is. <laughs> my guess is this has to be number one. Yes. An air fryer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How'd you know that? Because they just. Yes, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Air guess... fryer is number one. Now, I do have the great big clunky air fryer that I drag out from time to time. I put your two tater tots in it. And my tater tots or my vegetable tots aren't bad in there. No, but I mean, you it's so big. It is a little large. It's fast. It's faster than heating up your oven. But would you, do you still use yours? My um, younger son does use his, but ever since I realized that that's what a convection oven is. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. All right, number two. <clears throat> number two was, and I have never bought one of these. Okay. This was big with the millennials like the last couple of years. Instapot. Right, don't have one of those. I don't have one. No. A lot of people said that they were afraid of them. Maybe like the oh, pressure, pressure cooker of years ago. We're all afraid oh, of pressure Lord, cookers. I'm still if, scarred. By if that. you grew up in the 50s and oh. 60s, you'd be terrified. Was, that thing whistling. I think we've mentioned that. So go have, on. Yeah. Okay. Number three, I used to have one of these, finally got rid of it, is a bread, 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 bread maker. There. Huh, that surprises me. I yeah. think people like that, actually. I don't have one, but I... Apparently, I, nobody wants to make bread anymore. Yeah. Sorry. Number four is a juicer. Yes, I can see that. My older son really wanted one, but then they're expensive, and... And you just don't. Right. I yeah. did for a while. I had an old one. Did you? I didn't know. Yeah, well, that's because it was old. Uh, 20 years ago, maybe they've improved. I was thrilled with throwing spinach into my juicer or whatever, and that died. Died real quickly. My juicer, love, not my juicer. All right. All right. Number five is air poppers, popcorn. Oh, what? I, I like know. those. That's a good I like those. Yes. Nobody, well, you can buy so much popcorn now in the bags that they taste pretty good. They do. They do. Yeah. I love that. Number six is a rice cooker. Oh, I still like my yeah, rice you cooker. Gave me a rice cooker. Did I, I? I still like it. I would not have put that on the list. Number seven, and we use this a lot as newlyweds. An electric griddle. Yeah, they don't work well. They don't. No, it's too they're... bad. They were handy for pancakes, but sorry. they don't work well. Number eight. Are you ready? A food hydrator. Or right, you wrote dehydrator, I think. Oh yeah, it is dehydrator. I, I can't know. read my own writing. No, no, that sounds too yeah pioneer you, woman for me. You or... dry up your food. And no, you know, what would you dry up? Your apricots, apples, prunes. Yeah. No, mm, no. All right, number nine. The electric can opener. Oh. I know. And I don't have one. I use my hand one. Yeah, I use my hand one too. Yeah. The hand crankers have been working pretty well. Nobody yeah, none of those cranker. are perfect. I think if someone wanted to make a better 
oh, can opener. Yeah. We like, oh, there's so many cans now they have the tabs. Yeah. So, so you do that. Yeah. And number 10 was tied with the ice cream maker and the electric knife. Oh, I like my electric knife, but I suppose people have gotten all into being very, they're, people are good with knives. People are very good with knives. Oh, they can just cut those onions and they chop, have chop, their, chop. right. Yeah, so, and. Oh, I still use an electric knife. Now, let me ask you this. I have two favorites. What two appliances have you kept and loved and cannot live without? If it dies, you're getting a new one. Oh, you, you. I, I don't know. You, I, I, All right. Well, I actually have three. Oh, my pizza maker. Yes, the pizza, pizza maker. Because it has spinner. Oh, my oh, pizza maker. It yeah. The best. It could probably work as an air fryer. I mean, you just plop it. I have. You have to be yeah. careful to keep it balanced. Yeah. But the th great thing about that is, right, you don't have to preheat the oven and 15 to 20 minutes of pizzas. Just hot and crispy. And you can bubbling. watch it rolling around. Oh, oh it's so much fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a winner. Now, I have two others. Crock pot, I really, it's a, it's steady. She's steady. Like yeah, the crock pot is steady. Through the years, always there, steady. Oh, I love that description. Yeah. And sure. sometimes, not that you forget about your spouse, but sometimes I do forget about that yeah. crock pot, and then it comes roaring back. These Suddenly you're making right pot there. roast and chili I know, and baking. I do love you. Yes. yes. So, here yeah. we go. And then, of course, I hadn't written it down in my notes here, but I could not live without my morning Keurig coffee. Yeah, and I like that new Nespresso, too. So, oh, yeah, right, those kind of things so are... anyway, happy appliance thoughts. That was great. Now, we had a big topic here, and I think we will introduce it, but we may have to continue it next time. Table it till the next yeah, time. Yeah, we're going to leave you on a cliffhanger. Oh, no. Yes. We're going to leave our all our friends on a cliffhanger here. I wanted to talk to you about something that we used to have so much fun doing, and maybe we can talk about the beginning part. I am saying Parade of Homes. Oh! And our by beginning part, I mean our first time going to a Parade of Homes, which the parade, it's not a parade, it's homes. Yeah, it's We're not, parading through the homes. It's not cars with uh, flags. Right, it, right. We I, are the parade. We are the parade. Well... Oh, they were fun. So what used to happen was developers would, would take over a neighborhood and they'd all build a house, maybe one developer or several developers, but yes. it would be in a, like a new allotment. Yes. And it was a big deal. You would drive to whatever town or suburb they were in and you'd park in a big cornfield and then they'd come pick you up in a bus yep. and drop you off and then you went from house the house and oh. you got a bag to collect all the magnets and calendars it was and phenomenal yeah what are your memories and of they it were just, i remember going with mom and dad and this would be a big event i would look forward to oh for like weeks yeah it was like christmas in july it huh? was christmas in july right. and just all the fabulous new decor and the rooms and styles it was amazing and best of all there were usually about eight homes maybe i'd say that eight after to ten. after the middle home you went to whatever fabulous little food court area they had they of. did have that and they would have local vendors and really good food you get your little table out under the tent and then venture on to the next five or six oh that was so much fun and i wish we could talk more about it but Let's let's save that. Let's draw enough arrows right. and stars drawing, drawing. that will Got remember it. it for next time because we have many more memories to share about different kinds of parade of homes, and I really want to get into that. Oh, I wish I was. But I also that. want to reheat my coffee, and I think we're. It's time to say goodbye. It just always comes way too fast. But thanks for listening, folks, and thank you, Pat at Speak Up Talk Radio. She always helps us put this and, together. And thanks to the people who have contacted us and, and sent us things and asked us questions. Yes. That is so super. We love it. We love you. We and I love, love you. you. And I love you. And you know where to find us and we can never remember. But For just, sure, if you go to okboomerpod.com or really any podcast app. Right. And just keep typing in OK, OK Boomer. Boomer Pod or Boomer Podcast. And then there we are. Clinking holding our, our Apple Watches that are just from the store. But yes. Yeah. All right, folks. Thank you, everyone. Love, Love you. you. Toodaloo. Toodaloo.
Be sure to come back to Beautiful Ohio and the OK Boomer podcast. To listen to previous episodes or to drop us a line, visit okboomerpod.com.